Hello, welcome to Buffing Up, our London Cello Society online workshop. We're super excited that so many of you have joined us. My name's Josh Salter, and I'm going to be teaching you all about warm-ups. And I'm Thomas Gregory, and I've uh, written a special piece for you today. I hope you've uh, you probably had a look at it already. I'll be showing you later on how to play it. And just to mention, if you have any comments or anything like that you'd like to share with us, please use the uh, the chat thing underneath, and we'll have a read while we're while you're watching, and help you answer your questions in a short while. Let's get on with it. What we do is look at warming up, how we get really ready to play our cellos at our best. So, first thing we need to do is put our cellos down. Put them within easy reach, but far away enough that you're not going to knock them because we're going to do some movement. So when we're playing our cellos, we can get so concerned with what's going on up here, with what we're doing with our fingering, with our shifting and our bowing. We can be really, really focused on our arms and we lose awareness of the other parts of our body but we need a lot of awareness of our feet as cellists so we're going to play the stamping feet game which helps us put a bit of our brain into our feet the game goes like this watch first and then there'll be a chance for you to join in stamping feet stamping feet everybody stamping in a london street so we really feel the soles of our feet on the floor. Do you want to try the first bit with me? Let's just say the words together. Stamping feet, stamping feet. Ready to join in? One, two, three, four. Stamping feet, stamping feet. This time, we'll stamp along. We'll do a stamp with each syllable. One, two, three, Four, stamping feet, stamping feet. I'm sure you've got that. So the next bit is the fun bit. It goes, everybody stamping in a London street. So let's try saying the words first. One, two, three, four. Everybody stamping in a London street. Do you have another go? That's pretty quick, isn't it? One, two, three, four. Four, everybody stamping in a London street. Okay, I'm sure you've got that now. We're going to try that bit with the stamping. One, two, three, four. Everybody stamping in a London street. All good? Let's put it all together. So we go stamping feet, stamping feet. Everybody stamping in a London street. A one. Two, three, four. Stamping feet, stamping feet. Everybody stamping in a London street. Now I'm really aware of my feet on the ground after that. I'm aware that my heel and my toe, with both feet, is really, really on the ground and supporting me. So now that we've got our feet like that, that's where they're gonna stay. We're not going to do any cello playing like this on tiptoes, or like this, or like this. It's going to be straight down with our feet. Our next thing is to get our shoulders nice and relaxed. It's very easy to play cello with our shoulders up here by our ears, but we mustn't do that. So we've got a little game that's going to help us relax our shoulders. I'll demonstrate first, then you can join in. It goes like this. And then I'll count to four, and we go back to the beginning of the pattern. Let's try the ah bit together first. One, two, three, four. Mm -mm -ah. Mm -mm -ah. 
How did that go for you? Let's give it one more practice. One, two, three, four. Mm, mm, ah. Mm, mm, ah. And I hope you're joining in with the sound effects at home. They are very important. Okay, next bit. We roll our shoulders backwards. Yeah, yeah. Let's give that a try. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Another go. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Then the final bit. We start with our arms stretched out, and then we go whoa, and give ourselves a little hug at the end. Let's try that. One, two, three, four. Whoa. Okay, so we're going to put all that together. It's mm mm ah, mm mm ah, yeah, yeah, whoa. Then I'll count one, two, three, four, and we go back. Mm mm ah, and so on. Listen carefully. I may change the speed a bit when I'm counting. Okay, ready to go. One, two, three, four. Mm mm ah. Mm, mm, ah, yeah, yeah, whoa, one, two, three, four, mm, mm, ah, mm, mm, ah, yeah, yeah, whoa, one, two, three, four, mm, mm, ah, mm, mm, ah, yeah, yeah, whoa, one, two, three, four, mm, mm, ah, mm, mm, ah. Yeah, yeah, whoa, one, two, three, four, yeah, yeah, whoa, one, two, three, four, mm, mm, ah, mm, mm, ah, yeah, yeah, whoa. And there we go. Well, my shoulders feel as if they're about an inch lower than when we started that game. So that's a really nice feeling and one that I'm going to hang on to whilst I play my cello. Now that we've got our bodies loose and lithe and limber, it's time for us to think about how we're going to sit with the cello. We need to be sitting to impress. We should be thinking that the Queen is watching us and we're going to sit as tall and proudly as we can. We're not going to be in a forwards banana like this. We're not going to be in a backwards banana like this. We're just going to be sitting up. So, pick up your bows. Not your cellos for now, just your bows. And we've got two little games to do to check a couple of things. I'd like you to very gently place the tip of your bow between your big toe and the toe next to it. And then check that that lines up with your knee. So we've not got duck feet like this. We've not got sergeant major feet like this. Our knees are just going away and our toes are nicely aligned with them. So check one foot. This is my lazy knee, it likes to go like that. So I've got to send it away. Check the other foot. And that gives you a nice solid base. Then, with a normal bow hold, get the screw of the bow and very gently pop it into your belly button. And then we're gonna go like this and we're gonna see that we're really sitting in a centered way. So our belly button and our chin, our nose, the space between our eyes, and the crown of our heads all want to be in a line. I got my nicest shirt out for this occasion, so I can use the buttons of my shirt as well. They all join to make that line, the midline of my body. Now, 
we need to try and keep that alignment when we pick up our cellos. So just watch a sec and get ready to have a little chat with your mum or your dad or your practice partner, whoever might you be with, or just a little think to yourself and see what happens when I bring in the cello. I'll just do that again for you. So I'm sitting really well in this really centered way. What happened? Take a moment to think about how you're going to put that in words. So what I was doing wrong is I was going off to the right and I was going down that way. What needs to happen is I need to stay centered and sitting up. So if we really imagine our midline as we bring the cello in, and make sure that the cello fits around us and we don't fit around the cello, then that's a much better, more balanced way to sit. So give that a try. Check you've got your, check you pass the belly button bow test. And then put the cello in without too much disruption. Now that you're sitting with the cellos, Get your bows on your lap, please. And we're going to give the cello a nice hug. And then we're going to sway from side to side. Checking that the cello is securely between our knees. It's not going to fall out anywhere. And then we're going to come back to rest in the middle. Slide your hands until you're lightly holding onto the fingerboard. And then, remembering the lovely low shoulders we've found with mm -mm ah, we're going to flap our bird wings. So our whole arm can move flexibly, but our shoulders don't need to get involved. I don't want to be seeing this, because that's much too much like hard work, and we like to be lazy when we play the cello. Next job for you to do is turn your hands into little blobs Take them up towards the nut up here and we're going to have a little blob race down the cello, down the fingerboard. And come back. Let's do that again. Now send your right hand down and this time they're going to cross over each other. Close both your elbow joints without getting your shoulders involved. Final thing to do, we need to make sure that we're always practicing in a clean and tidy, well-organized space. That doesn't just mean that we need to have folded up our washing, that also means we need to polish our cello bubble. So let's get both of our hands at the ready and we're going to polish the windows of our cello bubble. Big circles to polish. Then change direction. Now let's stretch up, polish the ceiling with this movement. Polish the sides of the bubble. Polish the floor. You feel like showing off. One hand can do the ceiling, one hand can do the floor. And swap. And finally, polish the table. Big circles to polish the table. And then make them smaller and smaller and smaller. Then change direction and make them bigger and bigger, and bigger, and then go back to a bear hug to finish. And there we go. 
I don't know about you guys, but my cello bubble is looking a lot cleaner and tidier than when we started. And I'm feeling really ready to play and really connected to my cello. Next, we're taking a trip to the cello gym. I'm sure lots of your mums and dads go to the regular gym and feel much better after they've been. I'm not so good at remembering to go to the gym. I forget a lot, but I never forget to go to the cello gym. So let's go there together. The cello gym is a great place to get your left hand fingers nice and strong. And the cello gym has some useful equipment for doing that. At the cello gym, we have lots of squishy balls, which we can use to start to get our nice springy, round, C for cello shaped left hand. And you can get different strength balls. This one squishes very easily. This green one has a bit more resistance. And this one, whoops, has the most resistance of all. So we can squidge them to get our hand into the right shape. We can roll them a bit between our fingers too. And all of these things help to give us our C for cello shape with our left hand. At the gym, lots of people do press-ups. Now don't worry, you're not gonna have to get down on the floor to do actual press-ups, but we are going to do some finger press-ups now. So staying with our left hand, our fingers hand, let's go on to the side of the cello and we're going to do some little press-ups with our fingers. So without moving our arm too much, we get the palm of our hand to go very close onto the cello, and then we push it away. You can think of a bridge here on your knuckles, and the bridge goes down and back up again. Down and back up again. And when the bridge is up, just see if you can pass your little boat under the bridge without it touching any of your other fingers. Now let's take this to the cello. We can take this into any position we like. I'm gonna go around about third position on the D string. Grade one students, you may well have only ever played in first position, that's just fine. But you might like to do it somewhere where you can see a bit better. There's gonna be no pitch really here, so it doesn't matter where you pick. Pop your first finger down, and then we're going to do the same movement on the cello. So we go in and out, in and out. Now at the gym, the more reps you do, the stronger you get. I think we're up to five now. So let's see if we can get to 10. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10. One more for luck. Whoa. That was a good workout. Second finger down, please. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you get the idea. Third finger. Leave your other fingers down. So you've now got one, two, and three all working as a team. I'll just do a few. And now fourth finger. And when you use your fourth finger, I don't want to see this, I don't want to see this. I want to see a good line from the tip of your fourth finger right down to your elbow. Can it be a bit like a bird wing? A nice line all the way down to the end. And let's do the press ups. One, two, three, four, five, and that'll do for now. 
Now, speaking of birds, they have wings and they fly. They also have beaks and they peck. So let's choose the same position. And this time we're going to practice tapping our fingers. We're going to play the little blackbirds game. And blackbirds go peck, peck, peck. Can we try that? One, two, three, four. Peck, peck, peck. Leave one down. Same thing with two. One, two, three, four. Peck, peck, peck. Again. Peck, peck, peck. Again. Third finger. Peck, peck, peck. And again. Peck, peck, peck. Up to four. Peck, peck, peck. Up to four. Peck, peck, peck. And the more you do this, the clearer the tap noise will be. Have a look at my little bridge across my knuckles. It's staying up. It's never going down like this. Always staying up so my fingers can lift and drop from there. Now, blackbirds is one thing. What about woodpeckers? Woodpeckers go peck, 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 peck. Can we try that? One, two, three, four. Peck, 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 peck. Again, peck, 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 peck. Two. Again, peck, 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 peck. And three. Again. And four. Again. And if you stick with it, with this exercise, before you know it, you'll be ready for advanced trill exercises by Fayard and Cosman, which really give you strong fingers. Final bit of equipment at the cello gym is a water pistol. Why on earth does the cello gym have a water pistol? It's to work on our détaché bow stroke. Détaché is where we open and close from our elbow joint and where we really use our forearm to get good bow strokes. This is the most important bow stroke to learn. So what we do is we take hold of the water pistol with our left hand, get the handle with a nice bow hold. These are available in pound stretcher. And then open and close, making sure we're using our elbow like a hinge. Now you may not have one of these just yet, although I really recommend you get one. If you don't have one, pop the bow on the string for me. Just check that the hair of the bow and your string make a T shape, have a right angle between them. Hold onto the bow with your left hand really strongly, and then we can practice that movement, opening and closing your elbow. And then let's see if we can get the same feeling when we play some semiquavers on open D. So take a moment to practice that just now. Well, thank you, Josh. I don't know about you, but my shoulders are feeling very relaxed and my arms are feeling nice and limbered up after that. Well, I hope you've all added water pistols and squishy balls to your Amazon wish list. Don't forget you can type questions and comments for us to look at. Now it's over to Thomas to learn this exciting new piece. Hello, I'm Thomas Gregory and uh, I'm going to show you today a piece that I've written specially for the London Cello Society. It's called Gliding Above. You would have had the music hopefully. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it yet, but um, if you haven't, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll work on it together now. Um, so I was thinking the, uh, the piece, I wanted it to be, I wanted to imagine a sort of a large bird sort of gliding above hilltops and beautiful scenery, and maybe seascapes, things like that. So I don't know if you can think of uh, birds that have particularly large wings. I'm thinking of maybe the golden eagle or the albatross, something like that. So I tried to put into the music some moments where the, the wind, the air carries the bird aloft. And there'll be some things in there later and you'll see um, in some of the parts. 
Um, so I've written two parts. One is for grade one-ish. Um, there'll be some things that you might not have done in grade one actually in it, but they're not difficult and I'll explain how to do that. And then um, there's a grade two stroke three part, which has got some other some things that you probably might not have done before. Um, there's also a grade four-ish part, which you can have a go at doing, but I won't be able to, I won't have time to teach you that today, but I'm sure if you're smart enough, you'd work it out yourself, or indeed you can just come back to it later. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the uh, grade one part. Um, if you are, if you decided you want to play the other part, the more difficult part, then let's, let's try and play this one together anyway, because it's, uh, um, it'll be easy for you in a nice little warm-up. So make sure you are comfortable and sitting. Uh, I, mean, I know you've had a warm up already, so you're probably well, well comfortable in your seat. You're sitting up nice and tall. Um, we're going to have to start right from the top um, before we even have a go playing it with the backing track, which you might have tried already. We're just going to look, go over the notes um, without the backing track. So my computer doesn't fail on me. Um, so what do we do in the first line? Let's have a look at the very first line. We've got a note right at the end that says low one on the A string. So I'm going to play from the first, from the beginning of the first line. So that might be a note that you've not played before. That's a B flat. And for that note, you're going to have to move from your normal one position right back to almost three, almost like you're falling off the back of the fingerboard there. So if, you're, if I'm going to play it for you, could you copy me afterwards? I'm going to play a B, I'm going to play this, and then I'd like you to play it after me. So, so I've got one finger on the A string, one finger on the A string, and then play with me. Here we go, two, three, go. B. three beats and then we'll carry on. So now I'm going to play you the first two lines and then we'll play it together. So watch me play it first and then we'll play it together. So this is the beginning. So they're not really aggressive, nothing like that, but just more But you're giving them this sort of a little kind of a detached shape, but um, But it's not too aggressive. So we're going to play from bar 17 now, bar 17 to the fourth line down I count you in, one, two, three, go So this is from the beginning 
up to the letter B, okay? And I'll count you in. Here we go. We've got it already now. I won't play too fast, so we'll try to keep up. All right, here we go from the beginning. One, two, three, go. <laughs> where it says underneath the notes, it's got these two lines, one that goes bigger and one that gets smaller. I might have to go around for you. Um, we call those hairpins because they look a bit like hairpins, um, but actually what it means is the first bar you get louder and the next bar you get softer. So it sounds like this. <laughs> So it goes four, four, uh, <coughs> four, 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 two, 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 four, 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 two. Okay, let's try that from letter B, four finger on the D string. One, two, three, go. Four, 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 two, two. Starts the same. Here we go. Let us see. One, fourth finger on D. One, two, three, go. <laughs> lines are very similar to what? Yes, that's right. They're very similar to the very beginning. Um, there's a few little extra bits at the end that are repeated, but otherwise it's just like the beginning. So let's play the last two lines together from bar 37. I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. 
and then move back like that. And I use my elbow. If you don't move your elbow, then it's a bit of a strain, a bit of a strain on the fingers. So I use my elbow to just ease that first finger back a little bit. All right. So let's just practice doing that together. So I'll play it first, and then you play it with me. So this is this is what I'm going to goes to do. And then elbow and first finger. Went a bit too far that time. Let's try that together. One, two, three, go. Sometimes getting that note in tune, as you can hear, isn't always that easy, straightforward. But that's what we do. Okay, so we make sure we get that nice low B flat there. And then, uh, so I'll now play the, and that's not so laid out the same way this time. I'm going to play everything up to bar 10, 11, 12, up to bar 12, okay? Uh, up to bar 12. If you can play it already, then come on and join in with me. If you're not sure, just watch the first time. So, one, two, three, here we go. So let's try that all together from the beginning. One, two, three, go. <laughs> here though when we get to bar 17 so I'm going to play from uh, I'm going to carry on from where we just stopped so <laughs> So I'm going to have that open shape here, like that, okay, so I'm going to have my open shape there, um, alright, so then I'm going to do a big slide, so let's watch, this is some letter B. You see there's a sort of line there that joins the, this note, a harmonic A, and that's a harmonic A up there, which means I don't press down on the note, I just touch the string where the A is. 
and it should sound like that. It's a really lovely floaty sound. So when I do the slide, I'm just going to let my finger just slowly drift, take the pressure off the finger as I slide up. So we do that one together. So start with C, second finger on the A string, and we're going to slide up to a harmonic A. One, two, three, go. Good. And the first harmonic A is just a quaver, so it's going to be quite a short note, so it should sound like this. It was a little hot. Like that. Let's try that together. One, two, three, go. Lovely. Good. So now let's put that together from letter B. We're also going to do our little hairpins again, where it gets louder, up to the point of the top A, and then it gets softer. So this is from letter B. So two, get your first finger ready in sort of half in uh, extended mode. One, two, three, go. Then we're going to do the same thing now, but on the D string. So it's going to sound like this. some fingerings in on the uh, bar 27 where you'll play all this in what's called fourth position. Of course you could play it here. But what's nicer about doing it here is the sound is very sort of mellow, it's a nicer mellower sound and also it's we're already in that place more or less so we don't have to move our hand back yet so we can just play it. C, we'll go back to our first place in first position. You understood? So that's quite, you can play this in different positions, but we're going to try to stick to these ones. So if you're not sure, just follow me. I'm going to play everything now from bar B, sorry, bar B, from letter B uh, through to bar 33. Okay, so watching me, this is letter B. If you want to play along, you can, if you can do it already. Otherwise, just watch. Here it goes. Back to the first position. Fourth position. Then I go back to first position on the A string. This bit you can see, I've got fingers on there, that means we're going to play this in fourth position as well. And then we go back to first position just before, the, uh, before bar 33. Okay, let's try that together. So this is letter B. Two on the A string, here we go with our long stretched first finger. Here we go, letter B. One, two, three, four. Crossing. We have uh, underneath a little scale. So the fingers go D one two four D one two D, and then we just play a little A string in between. So with the string crossing like this, we're going to use little circles. Can you see what happens to my hand when I'm playing this? Try to do big circles, then you'll get a bit, you'll have trouble getting across the string nice and tidily. So we're gonna make little circles. Let's try and play that together nice and slowly. This is from bar 33. One, two, three, go. One more time, let's do it again. One, 
two, three, go. Great. And the next bit, we just, uh, it's another sort of a scale again. I'll do it one more time and then we'll try it together. So starting with a B flat. Sometimes if you want to practice that, uh, you can do it without playing the A's. So you play something like this. So let's play that whole of that line, and then I'll tell you what we'll play then. At the end of that line, of course, we go straight back to the beginning. All right. Um, so let's play that line, bar 33, and then go straight back to the beginning. So we practice going right back to the beginning. We might not play all of that again just now. So this is bar 33. Here we go with the repeat. One, two, three, and four, and. <laughs> Okay, is there anything I need to tell you about that? Not really. You have done all these notes already, and uh, if you've had a look at it already, you'll probably know what to do. Um, so I'll we will we'll now play from bar th uh, bar thirty three, and then we will carry on to the end of the piece. Okay, so bar thirty three without a repeat, going straight to the end. One, two, three, and four, and. <laughs> and try to try to think faster and you'll be fine all right so here we go this is with the backing track <laughs> Yeah. 
Well, I loved that funky piece. What a super addition to our repertoire. I particularly loved how it gave us a chance to explore fourth position, not just on the A string, because it's really important that we know where all of our notes are across all four of our strings. So this was a really good example of that. Now, hopefully this is the chance for you to get typing and we'll see what questions and comments we have flooding in. Well, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on them uh, for you, Josh, here. I'm, I'm seeing there's quite a lot of messages that have come from, uh, from somebody, which is fair enough, but he's just deleted them all. So, uh, but I've got a few. I've included a link to your, um, what was it? Oh, the water pistol. Water, Brilliant. The water bottle yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. So That's I've, good. I've included a link there. So if you want to go, go out and brush out and buy one of those to, to you know, practice your bow arm, uh, what else? So if you've got any messages, I'm going to keep an eye on this while Josh does a little uh, little exercise with you. So if you've got anything to say, send it in now and I will read them out and we can perhaps answer some questions if you have any. So as if you hadn't learned enough warm-ups already today, I'm going to give you a little bonus one. And I'm spelling that B-O-W-N-O-N-U-S. We're going to do a bit of boga. So we probably can put cellos down for this actually. Let's get him out of the way. Thank you for your help. So pop your bow on your knee, pointing to the ceiling, and then we're going to climb up the bow, send your fingers up, and then slide your thumb to follow them, like a monkey climbing the tree. Make sure your thumb stays under the bow, it doesn't want to be gripping on the side of the bow, but really between the stick of the bow and the hair. Get all the way up to the top, that's it and then climb down, this is a bit harder then round two we're going to take it off our knee so we need a bit more strength now, we don't have so much support, climb up and climb down And then we can also do our Fireman Sam exercise. Fireman Sam sliding down the pole where we just let the bow, we really lighten our bow grip and we just let the bow slide between our thumb and our fingers, which is exactly the feeling we need when we have to shift, but we don't want to hear a glissando. We have to lighten our bow holds to avoid the slidey noise. How are these comments coming along? Oh Thomas? well, we've got a few. <laughs> yes, I've awesome. done enough. I've not enough of your yoga thing. Um, yes, so let me see now. I don't always know who 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 everybody is, but we've got Madeline Duber saying, "I love the song," which is nice. Thank you, Madeline. Uh, Selma says, Selma Goxon says, "Please send us a link for that water pistol." It is actually there. If you go, if you scroll back in the messages from Vanoush Music, it's got it's called Four Pieces Colorful children's water gun series so it's up further up there if you, you can find that uh beck hardy says thanks that was good i'm from color strings music school frank thank you frank um and then someone whose name is two cams we really enjoyed it thanks so much thank you two cams um selma again she says she loves the bird song and backing track the funkiest bird in the neighborhood today i i think that's certainly, that you? What, that's certainly what I was trying to achieve, so I'm glad it, it worked out there. I was quite enjoying the funkiness of it myself, I have to say. Um, Victor Ashkeri says, how do you feel when you make a piece of music? Um, oh, there's lots of things you have to think about all the time, especially if you're writing for a specific, specific level. You think about how, what's easy, what's difficult, what's challenging, what's boring, what's uh, stimulating. And then you work out what notes you want to use for that reason. And then you try to sell it by making a backing track that will make it all come alive. I'm sorry, we didn't get a chance to play it with the backing track very often, but that's something you can do as much as you like from now onwards, really. But yeah, I mean, it depends on the piece. But this time it was just about having fun for certain. Who else? Uh, Rowan Fleming, thanks. Katie Crosskeys. Hi, I'm an adult learner. Um, well done, Katie. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Quargle. Hi, Jacob's mum here. I should, I should probably read them before I read them out, just in case someone spelt something wrong. But uh, hi, Jacob's mum here. We are wondering if small daily practice is best. 10 to 15 minutes or a couple of long practices? What do you think, Josh? 
I think little and often, definitely, especially if it's a young child, because you just need to get into the routine of getting sat nicely with the cello. And the more times you repeat that process, the better. Um, so small practices with really good awareness and really good attention to how you're doing everything, not just feeling like you're slogging away, playing things over and over and over. Um, I agree. I yeah. think possibly leave the cello somewhere you can access it quite easily. So don't pack it away all the time because that can take up. If you're only practicing for 15 minutes, you don't want to be packing up and putting away for 10 of those minutes. So leave it somewhere close by so you can just grab it, play it before you brush your teeth or before you have your dinner or something like that regularly. And then you'll find yourself improving much quicker mm -hmm. over the long term. Katie says, I really enjoyed that. I've heard that already. Yeah. Alessia Gustianian. Yeah. Oh, I haven't pronounced that. Just, that's a nice name. Just, Justin and yeah, no. <laughs> Thanks so much, she says. Sorry, I'm not pronouncing your name properly. Nick Theobald, I can't see the water pistol link either, so I don't you put it on again. Okay. We'll repost I'll it. I'll put it on again. Sorry about that. Um, but look, if you search water pistol on Amazon and just keep scrolling down, you'll find things that are oh, similar. See, Selma says it's not there. Okay, I'll put it on again. Not sure why that isn't there. Strange. Um... Alessia is a nine-year-old. Thank you, Alessia. Sorry, the other name I can pronounce earlier. On my mum's account. Oh, I see. Maybe you're not Alessia then. Love the cello, Jim. Wish I could learn more. Oh. That's from Selma. Uh, Katie says, will this YouTube film be available after? I'm told it will, so so you can you can access it again. You can do the whole thing again. What fun. Uh, and Alessia says she practices an hour a day, which is... Even better, I have to say. That's good. That's really good. Thanks both. We will keep with the routine then, Emma and Jacob. They asked the question earlier. And the last thing, it was real fun to play, by the way. I am Annalie. Do you know Annalie? I don't know Annalie. Thank you, Annalie. That's really nice to her. That's from Madeline Dubert. Yeah, her name's Annalie. So, really glad you enjoyed all of that. I certainly did. And uh, yeah. keep practicing. Yeah. Well done. I know it's hard to concentrate staring at a screen. I'm sure you've all done really well. Hopefully next time we'll see you in person. Yeah. Bye, folks. <laughs>